ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावृति अर्यंता ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावृति सिद्धा ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावृति आयर्याम ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावृति उवच्चाया ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावृति श्रावण ओंकार बिंदु संयुक्त निंदी योगिन कामदम मोक्ष शिव ओंकाराय नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूत चकाशते चिपसभावाय भावाय सर्वभावाचिदे अज्ञानतिरंदा ज्ञान अंजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तीर्थंको जगत न जयवंत वर्तो ओंकार नाद झिनो जयवंत वर्तो झिनना समो शरण सौ जयवंत वर्तो मे तीर्थ चार जग मयवंत वर्तो नमो तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगरो तेने नमो देशी कुंद कुंद ने अहो उपकार जिन वरनो कुंदनो ध्वनि दीवन जीन कुंद ध्वनि अहो ते गुरु का नमो अहो भगवती मातनो ध्रुव अचल मे अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे सिद्ध मे वंदे कहो सुत केवली भाषित आसमय प्राप्त अरे हूँ एक शुद्ध सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय करे कई अन्य ते मारु जरे परमाणु मात्र नति अरे जम नेत्र ते मज ज्ञान नित्कार कन्नति वेदत अरे नामे जकर मोदय निरजा बंद ते मज मोक्ष मे ओम नमः सिद्धेव्यो ओम नमः सिद्धेव्यो ओम श्री सुदात्मा ने नमः जय जिनेंद्र जय जिनेंद्र जय <coughs> so we'll start now <coughs> okay so until now we have completed 13 stanza and there are three three kalashis also we finished and now we are starting today 14 stanza and as we said last week that uh, the <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the uh, last kalash kalash number 10 was a prelude prelude to the stanza uh, 14 and it was talking about the uh, uh, pure point of view so here we are this is the stanza 14 15 and 16 the three stanzas are there and they have importance in the sense in 14 stanza it is the pure point of view is explained mainly from the faith perspective in 15 stanza the pure point of view is explained mainly from the knowledge perspective and 16 stanza explains from right knowledge right faith and right conduct all three perspectives so this three it's three stanzas basically walk together what it says that how how we can use this pure point of view to understand the eternal true nature of the soul so right now we are concentrating on eternal true nature of the soul and for that thing how is this pure point of view helps us out remember one second i close the door <clears throat> remember that uh, as we have said pure point of view it's a partial point of view and partial point of view means nay 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 means it is giving the perspective from certain angle so pure point of view gives us the perspective of the eternal soul substance from purest point of view means substantial point of view means absolute point of view so that's what we are talking about and without further delay i'll bring the slide and so we can start understanding what it tries to tell us <clears throat> okay here we go slide show 
<coughs> so stanza number 14, summary of stanza 14, what it, does, what it says, we'll sing that stanza in a, a Prakrit first and then Gujarati. Jo pasadi apanam abbadda puttam ananayam niyadam avisesa samajuttam tam suddhanayam vimaviyanihi abbadda spasta ananya neje niyata dekhe atmane avishesha anasanyokta tene suddhanayatu janaje Suddhanai, Suddhanai, pure point of view. If we remember in 11 stanza also pure point of view came. Here also it says pure point of view. What's the difference between those two stanza and how it works? Abhadda, spasta, Ananya, Niyat, Avishes, Ansanyuk means this five adjectives given for the soul. And from that pure point of view, if you understand these five adjectives, then you can realize the soul substance. That's what it says. So <clears throat> let's see what it says in a uh, meaning of the stanza. Uh, 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 means about the five adjectives that has been described for the soul. That soul is born without any bondage. Soul is without any touch with the alien objects. Soul is uh, 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 with indivisibility. Soul has no modification occurring within. Soul is having no divisional of the attributes and soul does not have associative uh, uh, relationship with the alien objects. This kind of five inclinations, when you see it, the, 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 uh, the, the sishya means the student, you will understand that it means it is to be known with the pure point of view. That's Gathard. Then commentary on the stanza comes. There's a long thing that's there. We will be talking with each and every point on that one. Then it comes, uh, the commentary continues. What it says that uh, uh, there are five different attributes. Abhadaspasta, Ananya, Niyat, Avishesh, Ansanyukta. The five adjectives for the soul substance is given. And for those five adjectives to prove, to have it our understanding, it gives the examples. And through the example, it becomes very easy for us to understand. So all these five points, Abhadaspasta, Ananya, Niyat, Avishesh, Ansanyuk, all the five points, they are giving this example. This is a first example over here. Then this is a second example over here. Then there's a third example over here. There's a fourth one over here. And there's a fifth one over here. So it goes by those five examples. And we'll be going in greater detail about all those things. So we are not going to read all these things right now. Now, then after the Bhavat means verbal meaning comes. And basically, it tries to say that the soul can be uh, seen with a five different uh, model perspective. Number one, number two, number three, uh, number four, number five. All those things that we see, it, then uh, they are the modal point of view. And I hope to make that modal point of view secondary to have the substantial view, to understand the soul and to realize the soul. So these kind of things are um, coming over here. So we are here. So now it's a tika means commentary on the stanza. So let, let's start now. From absolute perspective, the soul is called pure point of view. As well as natural state of substance, Dravya Swaru. Now, soul, this pure point of view is the center of the discussion over here. Pure point of view, it means, what does it mean? It means soul itself can be called pure point of view. Now remember, when we say partial point of view, when we discussed in stanza 11, 
partial point of view when we discuss, we said conventional point of view and absolute point of view and everything. But those are those divisions are coming from the scriptural knowledge, from Sutagna. From Sutagna. So Suddhana means a partial point of view of a, of a pure point of view is part of the scriptural knowledge. Remember the five knowledge is division, knowledge can be done to five part, uh, sensory knowledge, scriptural knowledge, clairvoyance knowledge, telepathy knowledge, and omniscience knowledge. Five different knowledges are subgroups of the knowledge attribute. Now, in that one, the Srutagnan, out of five things, Srutagnan, scriptural knowledge is the one in which we can have division of the partial point of view perceived. So if anybody tells you that in the five knowledges, where will I find the partial point of view in the form of absolute point of view or conventional point of view, a partial point of view of any kind, where will I find it? Pure point of view, impure point of view, all those partial point of view, they will be seen in the Srutagnan only. Nai Srutagnan no Aunsche. Partial point of, view, point of view is part of the scriptural knowledge. Five knowledges Matignan, sensory knowledge, Srutagnan, scriptural knowledge, clairvoyance knowledge, Audignan, telepathy knowledge, Manaparyagnan and Kevalgna means omniscience knowledge, out of which only in Sutagna, only in Sutagna, we can perceive the partial point of view. And this point is very, we, we, we need to remember this point because the, for, after a while a slide is coming and a question is coming and there is going to be some question raised in our mind what Acharya Bhagwan wants to convey to us. So again, Sutagna means it is part of the scriptural knowledge. Now, what? how many knowledges do I have it right now? Or do you have it? Or any human being who is in the first gunsthana, how many knowledges can he be carrying? He is carrying two things, two things. Sensory knowledge and scriptural knowledge, only two. So we have two knowledges to work with. Uh, one sense, two sense, three sense, four sense, a living being. They can have only sensory knowledge only. Sutagnan means scriptural knowledge. It is associated with the mind. So anybody with the mind, any animals, any living being with the mind. So human beings and uh, animals higher form of animals like cats and dogs and uh, uh, rats and etc. They are called five sense sentient beings. So they also will have a sutagnan. They will have a scriptural knowledge. So this, the, the, everybody will have only two types of knowledges right now. Clairvoyance knowledge can be there in, the, uh, in, in a human being like us it will call wrong form of clairvoyance knowledge because it is associated with the wrong knowledge. It's associated with the wrong faith. So clairvoyance knowledge is called ku avadhignan, wrong types of clairvoyance knowledge. What's a clairvoyance knowledge? I'm sitting over here and I can perceive directly with my soul about some material object somewhere else away from me. I'm sitting in Phoenix. What is happening in New York right now? I can visualize in front of me exactly what is happening about the uh, matter objects in uh, New York or anywhere, for example. So this is a clairvoyance knowledge. Telepathy knowledge means I can read your thought process in your mind. That's a very refined form of knowledge. So telepathy knowledge is a, in, in which one can read somebody's mind. And last is omniscience knowledge in which only omniscient, or omniscient Lord 
and uh, liberated soul like Siddha Bhagwan and Aryan Bhagwan, they have that omniscience knowledge in which it's a pure form of knowledge, means they can know past, present, future of every substances in the universe at a given moment. So this five knowledge is out of which pure point of view will be perceived in a scriptural knowledge only. Any partial point of view will be perceived in the scriptural knowledge only. Right? So once that point is clear, then let's go to the next one. Now, a pure point of view also came in 11 stanza. In 11 stanza about the pure point of view, it said that pure point of view is a subject of mode and that is a soul substance. I have a pure point of view, but what is my pure point of view, pure point of view subject? Which subject I am attempting to know? And I am attempting to know soul substance. So in the 11 stanza, pure point of view is in a mode, but it knows the soul substance. So soul substance itself is called pure point of view. I, in, the, in my mode, in the pure point of view, knows about the eternal soul substance and knowing the eternal soul substance, that's a job of the pure point of view. So pure point of view by itself is called substance. Even though pure point of view occurs in the scriptural knowledge it is one of the mode of the knowledge and the pure point of view is a modal state modal state, but its subject is an eternal soul substance so it's been accused and said hey you are also pure point of uh, you are also uh, eternal soul substance so in 11 stanza when we went through it then at that time pure point of view was denoting about soul substance over here in the 14th stanza, it says pure point of view is a mode. It's experiencing mode of the eternal soul substance. So it's a modal point of view. So here, it's, uh, author restricts the activity of the pure point of view and says, listen, you are a mode, yes. Then you are a mode, period. Of course, you as a mode experiencing eternal soul substance, but I can't tell you that you are an eternal soul substance. You are simply a mode. So in 14 stanza, same pure point of view is called modal state. And in 11 stanza, it was called as a soul substance. So these are kind of little teeny tiny um, uh, changes that we should keep in mind. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, will... Back. Yeah. Huh. I, I, त्रिकाद्रव्य स्वरूप शुद्ध नहीं बराबर ओके okay. in the 11 stanza it be pure point of view is accused to be a soul substance by itself and in 14 stanza the author goes by purity and says you know what you are a mode means more and more i'm not going to call you to the eternal soul substance even though you as a mode are experiencing eternal soul substance but it's a modal state that means you are a mode only so in the 11th it is called substance in the 14 it's called more pure point of view right now the eternal soul substance is what is it now that there are five 
of adjectives for the eternal soul substance given over here. And each one is given an example. So those five points are the crux of this 14 stanza and same five points are the crux of the 15 stanza. So in 14 stanza, it's been explained from the faith perspective in 15 stanza and explained from the uh, knowledge perspective and in 16 stanza, faith, knowledge and conduct, all three perspectives are used. So this is kind of all three stanzas are kind of intermingled with each other. If we know one, then we'll be able to know the second one easily. So eternal source substance is unbounded and untouched, means of a dust prostor. Unbounded and untouched. What does it mean? Unbounded, the closest relationship with the soul. Soul has a relationship with the alien objects of the universe. But the closest relationship soul has is what? Closest relationship with the matter that soul has, that relationship is what is that substance? Then we can say, for example, body. My body and soul are kind of a, remaining in the same space point, even though they are separate. But closer than the physical body is something more. And that something more is a material karma. Material karma are somewhat tightly working with the soul substance than physical body. How come? Well, when I, I as a living being right now, if I'm being declared dead right now, physical body remains here and the soul lives from the body. So separation occurs from the physical body to the soul and it lasts for about no more than three samai and thereafter transmigratory soul ends up taking birth somewhere else and accepts the new body, a new physical body. So for those one to three samai, physical body and soul can be separated from each other. But, but while that soul is leaving this body right now and the soul is going to the next life, it, during the transit period, during the transit period, the karma are still along with the soul substance. So it's called karman body. This is the soul here, and soul is mixed with this karman particles, means karma, and so they go, they both, plus there is an electric body, three things, a soul, Karman body and electric body, all three travel together. So even in the three, one to three samai that this soul is taking birth somewhere else, so it's devoid of the physical body, but the, the um, karmic body is still there and the electric body is still there. You may say, what is that electric body has to do? Well, Electric body, which is part of the, uh, which is surrounded with the soul and everything, this body goes along with the karmic body and the soul. They all three go together and take birth somewhere else. Wherever the birth is taken, wherever the soul is taking birth, right away, soul starts attracting some matter particles. When it starts attracting matter particles, then matter particles becomes kind of a big ball around the soul. And then with this electric body, the heat will be generated. And from that thing in the center of the ball, a open the, the, the hole occurs and that, that whole the center, the, the, uh, the, the, the bunch of cells together, they get elongated and that hollow thing also get elongated and that way physical body is formed and if you are the student of embryology in medical school exactly what we are talking is being taught because that's what happens on human body development in the mother's womb so 
what what Jainism talks about, and if we talk that Mahavir was the last uh, last Tirthankar who gave us the the the, uh, uh, the 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 philosophical messages, then these messages are twenty five hundred years old at least. And during those messages, there is no changes has occurred. And right now, last two, three, four hundred years, some medical science has proven that yes, this is the way a embryo gets developed and all the things. So this this shows us this similarity how Jain principle go along with the medical profession. I mean, the science and everything. So science and Jain Jainism. They are kind of for supplementary to each other. They are not contradicting to each other. If science says there's a Big Bang theory and some other other religion says that there is an evolution theory and everything, and, and those things they don't match. Here, Jain principles, I mean the, the scientific principle, they match with the Jain principle. So Jain principle. So our point is unbounded, unbonded, unbonded means the karma particles karma particle when they get attracted to me now they get bonded to me they get bonded and last week we saw it that uh, that bonding occurs at every space point every space point has a karma particles represented and infinite attributes are also represented out of all those innumerable space point of the soul Every space point has a karma particles present, and so this eternal soul substance is unbonded. Means those karma particles are not bonded there for them. Siddha Bhagwan has no karma particles of whatsoever at all. The um, um, the the the, the uh, um, enlightened person, the one at the fourth spiritual development stage. To five, to six, to seven, all the way to twelve and thirteen spiritual state, everything. They have a karma bondage, but they are extremely loose karma bondage. So as good as they are unbonded. So eternal soul substance unbonded. Then there's other one called untouched. Untouched means physical body <coughs> and physical body related other objects. This is my phone. I put my name on this phone. I put my ownership on this phone. So this phone is also untouched with my cell, with my, with my soul. This physical body is untouched to the, <coughs> uh, the eternal soul. So unbonded, untouched. That's the first point that eternal soul substance is devoid of these two things. That's the first, first point. Second point is unique, is ananya, indivisibility. The soul substance is having indivisibility. It is not having any divisions within. Yes, there are divisions, but they are making way secondary. So primarily a soul substance is indivisible or unique in nature. It's called ananya. Then called stable. Stable means near. Near means unchanging. It will not be changing. It remains stable. It remains eternal in nature. <clears> There's <throat> called common without any differences. Avishesh. And again, we'll be talking a lot more about those things. And last one is unconnected, uncombined. It means asanyukta. So these five points we'll be having this 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 our this our our plate is full right now with these five points and we are going to work on these five points now if we look from the other angle sometimes we have discussed those things and it will come to your mind as soon as I just say this one is a dravya it's second kshetra. Third is Kal, fourth is Bhav, and fifth is Bhav. Dravya Kshetra Kal, Bhav, Bhav. So five points that we are taken into account. Dravya means substance from substance perspective. This Ananya means modal perspective. Ananya has a two points. 
the um, unique and stable will have a two division point one is a mode of the uh, 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 means uh, uh, area perspective there's an attribute which gives area to the soul substance and this is related to the mode of that area substance this table means all the attributes they have the modes of their own so this is the mode of the uh, 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 the the uh, area perspective mode this is the mode of every other of, uh, attributes present in the soul then common without differences means uh, it is about the bow means the diff uh, different uh, uh, attributes so this is called dravya this is called kshetra means uh, area this is called kal means uh, it is it is present in the all the uh, all the modes of the every attribute then this is called bhav means it is all the attributes of the soul in the indivisible fashion and this is called bhav means it is for the rag and dvesh of the soul substance so so it, dravya kshetra kal bhav bhav means abhadaspasta ananya niyata avishes ansanyukta okay this is the kind of prelude we are giving and again there will be a lot more discussion coming on those things so when it comes we'll go again more in detail about it but this 14 14 and 15 stanza dravya kshetra kal bhav bhav from all five perspective five um, adjectives are given and five examples are given five perspectives five examples and dravya kshetra kal bhav bhav five different things so this way we are going to talk about this one <clears throat> in this standard now um now what is unbonded, untouched means abadaspasta. There's a little spelling, there's, I forgot the S to put it over here. Abadaspasta means the soul substance is not touching the matter atomic particles and also not touching the generic carbon particles in its vicinity. Untouched means not touching body, etc. Quasi karma. And unbonded means no bondage with karma. So no bondage with karma and no touching with physical body, etc. That's called unbonded, untouched. That's the first principle. Second one, unique or ananya. Soul does not have different types of realms of existence. We'll be talking about gati here. Gati means we are, we are seeing ourselves in four different realms of existence. I could be human being, I could be celestial being, I could be infernal being, or I could be subhuman being, and all those changes are there, but soul substance remains unique, means it does not change, it remains, it has no differences perceived, it remains undivided, indivisible nature of the soul substance. In the stable means near form, near form in the mode differences are perceived soul substance is stable and without any differences that's a stable near fourth one is common without any with differences of the attribute of the difference of the differences of the knowledge faith conduct etc type of attributes are not perceived in the eternal soul substance even though they are infinite 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 amount of attributes present within and as we have said before also what does infinite means to start with infinite means if i take one small needle and on the top of the needle i put the piece of one uh, underground vegetables let's take over here potato for example if that teeny tiny area of that needle top has teeny tiny area of that potato, for example, in that piece, there are innumerable cells are there, innumerable physical bodies are there. Innumerable means, we have said several times, it could be 10 raised to 29 or 10 raised to 49, means huge numbers, huge numbers. 
innumerable and each body each body is an infinite living being of the lowest form of life means nigod infinite living beings are there in one living one one body and those kind of innumerable bodies are there on top of a needle having the piece of that um, um, uh, underground vegetables like potato now you can imagine in one one living one living body there are infinite living beings what is that infinite living being means what acharya bhagwan tries to explain to us to give us the importance in the past so many so many law living being end up going to the uh, uh, siddha shila in the present time so many are going in the future so many more will be going so in the past infinite living being went to moksha they are going right now and future infinite times infinite souls will be going to the moksha if we take all those living being all the siddha bhagwan liberated soul number which is infinite in number this cell this body this cell over here in which there are in have infinite living beings are there that infinite is infinite times more than this total liberated souls past present and future it gives some kind of perspective how many living beings are there when i said infinite times infinite means what what does it mean if we take two digit number for example starting with 10 is the lowest number of two digits and highest is 99 permutation combination between those two number will be 89 If I take three-digit number, one hundred up to nine hundred ninety-nine, then permutation combination can occur up to eight hundred ninety-nine times. If I take four digits, then one thousand and nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, or whatever. Yeah. So eight thousand nine hundred ninety-nine possible combination can occur in four digits, and so on and so forth. So infinite. how many permutation combination can occur, occur in the infinite numbers infinite combinations can occur so that's why infinite past present future living uh, as liberated soul times infinite are the presence of living being in one cell in that top of the needle potato and there are innumerable such bodies are there this gives us some vastness of infinite number so this is only we are talking about the living being that's an infinite then matter particles are infinite times infinite okay then time time units past present future time my unit of the time is called samay and we have talked about samay in the past and uh, it means it's a very minute part your millisecond and nanosecond and picosecond is no value there because in a blink of an eye blink of an eye innumerable time units pass by means 10 raised to 49 time units pass by like those kind of time units in the past are infinite and will be in the future will be infinite times infinite and so those kind of time units are third infinite you you have the the living beings are infinite in number matter particles are infinite times infinite and the time units from past to in future are infinite times infinite times infinite and fourth infinite is a one in which all the space unit space point of all the cosmic space and trans cosmic space combined together that will be the fourth infinite and fifth infinite is amount of attributes present in me in you in every substance so that many now it gives some enormity 
how many attributes do I have it? Forget about me alone, that me God cell, the one which lives in so many living in one body only, they also have that many attributes present. And so is Siddha Bhagwan. And all those attributes are having no differences, means they remain in unity. Even though they maintain their individuality, they are still in unity. That infinite attributes living in unity. So differences of knowledge, faith, conduct types of attributes are not perceived in the eternal soul substance. Soul is in general form common form without any differences. So that's a fourth point. The fifth point is an uncon un unconnected, uncombined, asanyuk, means auspicious, inauspicious inclination produces perplexity. Perplexity, it produces misery to me. The soul substance is unconnected, thereby has no perplexity, it has only serenity. So these are the five points. From untouched, uh, unbonded, untouched will be from the uh, substance perspective, dravya. Unique means ananya, pradeshatva, guni paryay means the uh, um, uh, extension into space attributes modification. Stable, niyat means all the attributes of the uh, 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 all the mo modification of the every attribute except for extension into space attribute. Pradeshatva gunsiya bija badha gunni pariyai e niyatma avse. Unique ananyama pradeshatva gunni pariyai avse. Unbonded, untouchma dravya avse. Dravya, kshetra, trijama kal, chothama bhav means the, the uh, attributes. And fifth one is a bow, means a, 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 a inclination of attachment and aversion. So these are the five things. Of course, it's, it's revision from the previous slide. Basically, it gives us better idea, better perspective, what we are going to hit the road with. Having said that, now, eternal soul substance is given such type of five adjectives. Eternal soul, soul substance is given these five adjectives and it has been said that these eternal soul substances devoid of those negativity uh, um, uh, because of these five points. This type, of soul, this type of soul when gets experienced in more then it's called pure point of view. What is pure point of view? It's defining pure point of view over here that you, I as a soul substance, and when I experience my soul substance, then I'm experiencing those so, that soul substance with this five point that we discussed in the previous slide. And that is called, that experiencing mode is called pure point of view. This experience occurs in the mode and bliss is felt. This is kind of unique point. The other day we were talking to some group of people and they said, how will I know when I get some darshan? It, innocent looking question, but very loaded question that how will I know that I, I got the, uh, 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 the, the uh, uh, some darshan right now? The answer is, when, there's a, when there is a, a knowledge occurs, when the knowledge and faith attribute is experiencing the eternal soul substance, then the byproduct or the effect of that is a bliss. So uh, I end up feeling the bliss or super sensuous bliss. Atindriya anand. And that happens. So that Atindriya Anand means super sensuous bliss. I never, ever, ever, ever had experience so far because I don't have some darshan because I have not experienced my soul substance directly. So because I have not experienced, so the results of uh, bliss is not been felt within me. 
Women can understand this question very easily. How does a woman know that she is pregnant? There are certain changes, of course, within her body. Certain unique things are occurring and she cannot express. There are no words, but she says something is different within me. Similarly, when this bliss is been experienced because some meditation is there. So you, you, you will be your own judge telling that when that experience occurs and that will be your samyak darshan. Lots of people get confused. There is a, there is a the, 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 the toxic emotions, kashai, krodh man, maya lobe, anger, deceit, greed, ego, when they become milder form and some people say, oh, oh, I have an experience of my soul substance, but that's a milder form of toxic emotion. They can always flare up anytime. But this unique form of uh, um, um, bliss that you one feels, that is never, ever, 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 ever been experienced before. It's a brand new thing when we be experienced. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Uh, angry, 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 angry. One second. One second. Okay. Sorry. We're quite today. Oh, sorry. Okay. So that's a bliss. Now, the soul substance does not come in the mo this point again. We have talked before. Soul substance does not come in the mode, only its conviction is felt in the mode. As we have seen, for example, there's a mirror over here and there's a fire over here. Fire is perceived, fire is seen, fire, the illumination is seen in the mirror, but mirror does not get warm just because it produces illumination of the fire within. Fire is over here, heat and fire is over here. Only the conviction, only the illumination is felt in the mirror. Similarly, when the peacock is over here, peacock is standing over here and peacock's illumination is being seen in the mirror. Similarly, peacock is there. Peacock's illumination is felt in my knowledge mode. So peacock has not come in knowledge mode. It's only the illumination is seen. Similarly, my eternal soul substance is over here and is getting experienced in my knowledge mode. Soul substance is over here. Only its illumination is occurring over here. And so the substance has not come in the mode. Only the illumination has come. And when the illumination comes, then there is associated with the bliss also felt in that mode. So that is also a very important point to understand that experiencing mode is different and experienceable soul substance is different. Soul substance does not come in the mode, only its illumination is felt, only its knowledge is felt, only its conviction is felt, and when that is felt, then it is associated with the bliss also in the mode. Because remember, soul substance is inert, does not change at all, attributes, infinite attributes are inert, they don't change, only change is action that will be seen, it is seen always, always in the mode. So action means modes, no action means substance and attributes. Okay, let's see further what it says. So the eternal soul substance is getting experienced in the mode with the help of pure point of view. Now pure point of view is entering in our system from the back door and says, listen, are you experiencing the pure point of view? I mean, are you experiencing the uh, eternal soul substance? Yes, then it is with my help that you are experiencing. So that point we have to understand that uh, it's experiencing is occurring because of pure point of view. So this experiencing more, this experiencing more by itself is called soul in 
11 stanza. Now, if we just go to the Alingrahana bowl, uh, I think a couple of classes back, three classes back, we have gone through those 20 points of Alingrahan in I think 10th or 10th, uh, 9th or 8th or 9th slope. Uh, Alingrahan. Alingrahan means there are 20 points. Amritsana Acharya Dev found out and he talks in uh, 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 Prochansa stanza 172. And all those points are in which it says, how is a pure soul substance is different from the other things, everything. But 20th point is very important, the last point. What it says that the soul substance is inert, attributes are inert. Only experiencing, experiencing action occurs in the modal state. And because it action is occurring in the modal state, so from one perspective, I will call that experiencing mode as a soul substance by itself. That is Amrachandra Acharya Dev's suggestions. So this pure point of view helps us to experience the soul substance. So that pure point of view, experiencing the soul substance itself is called soul substance. So it is, now that we are entering into very deep, deep knowledge section, that lots of scripture will be merging and will tell who is, where is the other cross reference and everything. So now pure point of view, let's talk pure point of view a little bit. And what is the pure point of view telling us right now? It says that in stanza 11, in stanza 11, pure point of, pure point of view was described, Suddhanai was described, and what it says there, that subject of pure point of view is eternal soul substance and that's why that pure point of view is called soul substance by itself. So in stanza 11, we are talking pure point of view from substantial perspective. From substance perspective, we are denoting pure point of view in 11 stanza. In the 14 stanza, our present stanza, it's a mode of the soul. This is this is the sub, eternal soul is called pure substance. Over here says mode, mode of the soul substance is called pure point of view because soul is experiencing knowledge. This experiencing knowledge is one part of Bhavsugnan. Bhavsugnan means it's a, a scriptural knowledge subjective scriptural knowledge and in that one pure point of view is experiencing the eternal soul substance so over here in 11 stanza it was used as an eternal substance and 14 stanza same thing has been called modal aspect this is one more thing that we have to refer to and that is kalash 120 and 121 kalash 120 and 121 when you go through that Samesha stanza, it will say something unusual. The pure point of view is really seen in omniscience knowledge. Now remember, earlier in the beginning of the class, I said five different knowledges are there. Sensory knowledge, scriptural knowledge, clairvoyance knowledge, telepathy knowledge, and omniscience knowledge. Five different knowledges out of which the partial point of view only only and only experience in a scriptural knowledge over here what it says pure point of view is really seen in omniscience knowledge Amrachandra Chandra Dev wants us to think very clearly very cleverly very microscopically because right now looking at it we said wait a second pure point of view cannot be in the omniscience knowledge because omniscience knowledge is perfect only nigh partial point of view can be experienced in a scriptural knowledge only so here you are talking omniscience knowledge how come how come what is happening what's happening 
at the time, Acharya Bhagwan says, hold on, hold on, because that means fruition of pure point of view is an omniscient knowledge. When you have pure point of view, means your attention is to the eternal soul substance, means you are experiencing eternal soul substance in your mode. That means ultimately fruition of that partial point of view will be end product will be omniscience knowledge that's where the partial point of view will take you and then it's, it's job is done it stops working there so this is kind of very nitty-gritty thing Chandra acharya wants us to think about it by yeah mode of the soul शुद्ध नहीं केवल ज्ञान कहो तो भाई केवल ज्ञान में नहीं क्या थी आयो बराबर तो तो के के शुद्ध नहीं नू फॉर केवल ज्ञान चे ये वो आचार्य भगवान नो केवानो आशय चे इटले ना बिकॉज़ आचार्य भगवान नोज दैट दिस गाइस आर वी आर वेरी सीरियस राइट नाउ दिस इज़ नॉट काइंड ऑफ़ स्टोरी टेलिंग थिंग दैट वी आर डूइंग this is very serious subject we are talking and learning and so we have to have our uh, ideas get ready from all different angles so there is no place in which we end up making mistake in our understanding so that's where it is important over here is there any question on this slide because that's again you know i mean uh, 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 this, this carries lots of significance because it just broadens our horizon of knowledge that how everything is neatly put together and there is no place one can find any kind of holes in this objective knowledge etc etc you know okay no question then we can go, go, go carry on further actually the yeah uh, stanza 14 pachini je slide che mode of the soul Modal aspect. Those yeah. experiencing knowledge. Experiencing uh, means knowledge is you, you. You have that. You have the knowledge attribute, right? You have your knowledge. So, but we have multi. We have uh, many. Uh, uh, anand. Uh, anand Gunashi. Ha. Huh. In a samay sar from. Beginning till 415 stanza, it keeps on saying that soul is knowledge and knowledge is soul. Soul is knowledge and knowledge is soul. That okay. kind of things are so tightly been explained. Then at the end of 415 stanza, Amrachandra Acharya Dev said, wait a second. All throughout, we kept on telling listener that soul is a knowledge and knowledge is a soul. So that way, somebody may walk out and say, so no, knowledge is only the attribute present in the soul. And just to rectify that problem, he put the appendix and he put 47 noi and at different points that he explained that not only add knowledge but in besides knowledge there are lots and lots of infinite attributes of present so do not ignore them that's what it means so over here it just making knowledge as a principal thing that whenever anything happens in me as a soul my action occurs that knowledge predominates predominant thing is a knowledge then there is a also faith attribute has a more mode and a conduct attribute has a mode and a bliss attribute has a mode and everybody has more but most important thing crux of the thing discussion will be from knowledge perspective knowledge attribute perspective knowledge attributes mode perspective so over here he says souls experiencing who is experiencing knowledge is experiencing knowledge mode is experiencing 
action is occurring in the soul and first thing knowing occurs and the knowing is occurring because of the uh, uh, eternal uh, because of the knowledge attribute <laughs> ंग द नॉलेज श्रुत ज्ञान तो शू कह प्रत्यक्ष परोक्ष Nah, so you very good. See now, you, you, your knowledge is having so much horizon is broadening that now you question this thing. That wait a second, Shrutagnan is called indirect knowledge. Then how come it's experiencing over here? Shrutagnan, the the the, uh, the 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 scriptural knowledge and sensory knowledge both, Mati and Shrutagnan both. they are called indirect because they we gather knowledge at this point with the help of senses and so that's why it's called indirect knowledge but that sutagnan is the one it is a capacity if we go through stanza 101 141 142 143 and last is 144 stanza when we go there then it says that sutagnan once what is happening right now i am gathering knowledge we all are sitting over here we are in the class then we do start reading we start to gathering knowledge and everything we listen to the audio tapes we uh, uh, we, we discuss the subject with lots of people and everything and that way we have indirect knowledge about the soul that we have accepted because i have used my eyes and ears and tongue etc etc and my mind also so indirect knowledge indirect way i have collected that knowledge and that's called sutagnan is indirect knowledge now after collecting all the knowledge is now i start reflecting upon myself I, die, i kind of imbibing that knowledge within me i start reflecting upon i i i, I contemplate upon i meditate upon and all the while i still have the indirect knowledge because it's called reflective thoughts it's called vikalpatma gnan so this thing is happening now now what is happening that your vikalp once you have made the decision about the eternal soul substance the reflective thoughts are going on and your knowledge is getting stronger and stronger now your reflective thought slowly slowly are tapering down and one fine moment your sutagnan takes jump and dives into the eternal soul substance and when that experiencing occur it is called direct experience with the with from your uh, sutagnan so sutagnan yes in general it's called indirect knowledge but when it experiences knowledge as soul substance then it's called the direct knowledge oh okay i didn't know that yeah because remember till you get an omniscient knowledge you have a sut gnan so that's why that experiencing knowledge is called bausrut gnan when we say bausrut gnan means the soul's experience with your scriptural knowledge soul's experience with a sut gnan soul's experience with a bausrut gnan so that's a definition of bausrut gnan is experiencing the knowledge of indivisibility of indivisibility indivisible soul substance experiencing that is with the uh, scriptural knowledge is called direct knowledge is called bausrut gnan okay huh? yeah it's a very good point you brought it out that's very good thank you thank you huh. okay let's go to the next one now if there's any more question from anybody else we can entertain that one okay uh pure point of view occurs in scriptural knowledge more again pure point of view occurs in sutagnan only yes pure point of view has made the eternal self as its ob- subject okay 
Soul is getting experience in the pure point of view in the mode and that pure point of view is from the scriptural knowledge. So my experiencing of course in the mode in the scriptural knowledge only. Sutagnanma Atmani Anubhuti Thai Experiencing of course in the mode. So this mode is also known as pure point of view. So this mode is called pure point of view which is doing the job of experiencing the soul substance is called pure point of view it is called bhavsudgnan it's called samyagdarshan it can be called samyagnan it can go self realization different names you can give let's see next one pure pure mode is coming from eternal pure nature of the soul see now eternal soul substance has only one job to produce pure modes so when will be the pure modes will be coming only when i bring the attention to the eternal soul substance so pure mode pure mode knowing is called soul atma that means the pure mode uh, 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 the, the, the pure mode of mind which knows the soul is itself is called atma means eternal soul substance is there but experiencing occurs in the mode so that experiencing mode itself is called soul right now rag mode is not called soul rag mode when i have the rag when i increase of attachment and that is the not the soul even though it's occurring in the soul but is transient in nature number one second thing it of course because there is a attention given to the alien objects of the universe and that's why rag mode is not called atma experiencing mode is called atma that's what it tries to say over here <clears throat> 14 stands from the right faith perspective and, and then we are talking that one right now the 15 stands from the right knowledge perspective and the 16 stands from right knowledge right faith and right conduct perspective this again gives some overview that what we are what we are expecting in these three stanzas so if we understand one part in one stanza second part in second stanza will be easy to digest because we'll be able to say same same examples will be coming in this as uh, 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 15 16 stanza so any questions so far over here we'd like to stop over here uh, i know we we, we we have not gone all the way to half an hour more but uh, you know i have something else happening so if you don't mind that we may have to uh, stop over here but if there is a question that we can entertain the question right now no i think i'm good okay. uh, if there is no question then we can do the closing okay Aho upakara jina varano kunda no dvani divyano jina kunda dvani apya aho te guru kanano jina kunda dvani apya aho bhagavati matano javani ke gyan se suje lokalo so vanna stata namo sadade tohum Mind comes from coming to. Yeah, help. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, 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 I'll call you back in two minutes, okay? Hold it, two minutes. Sorry. Thank you. Jai 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 J